guys good morning it's such a beautiful day to be alive i'm talking to you straight out of lagos nigeria it looks so beautiful what do you guys think man i love the buildings i love the road i love the weather i hope you're loving it too you guys my people so guess what today i'm with sasa Panke. hey guys so um we are in lagos nigeria and one of the things i love to do is show you where to eat whenever you're here and that is where we're going today we are going to a joint that we will totally recommend you visit whenever you come to nigeria i am extremely excited it's my first time going there i haven't been there before sase is taking me and i'm so humbled um in case you don't know her yet she is a nigerian youtuber we totally need to check out we have so much to discuss with her i will leave her link in the description box so um make sure you go over to her channel and subscribe okay i think i'm gonna see you guys when you get there guys we are finally here i am so excited see the thing about lagos i find that lagos is so chilled and you see most at least to me i don't know correct me if i'm wrong i, f I think most parts of lagos look like you know quiet high-end estates you know if you don't know if it's kenya you'd think we're in someone's estate but apparently it's business places it's so, it's, it's just so different from what we're used to in nairobi you know because in nairobi most businesses are just in the city center yeah but this place looks like a quiet estate yet you have restaurants around anyway we're finally here yeah so let's go guys welcome to bl restaurant located right at the heart of lagos i asked my friend to take me to her favorite restaurant you know where she would recommend someone to eat and she brought me here i am extremely thrilled to be here i can't wait to see what the place looks like what they have to offer um let's go in and find out guys um so as i told you earlier today i'm hanging out with sassy funky yeah, yeah. So I'm, I'm so happy to be hanging out with you again the last time i saw you in person was in 2019 yes, when i was right. in lagos I'm, I'm so happy to be with you today same here for those who are watching tell them who is who are you okay so my name is sassy pink hair and i'm a nigerian author and i'm also a travel and lifestyle content creator so i really create to help the average Nigerian and African traveler travel better and smarter. That's amazing. So for a long time I've known her as a YouTuber. She does amazing content. I'm gonna leave the link to her channel in the description box. So head over to her channel and subscribe. But there's something she's done recently and it's blown me away. You guys, this is amazing because you know most of you guys love to travel. This is mostly a travel channel. And guys, I'm telling you, if ever if ever you are thinking of coming to nigeria <laughs> oh you need this 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 is what you need um you you wrote this book yeah yes I wrote this what inspired you to write this okay i'll give you the story okay. um 2000 and i think it was 17 18 i was actually in america in a bookshop and i was in the travel section because i love travel that's what my channel is about traveling and I just went to and see like the African travel books that were there. I saw obviously Kenya, so many books on Kenya, on South Africa. When it came to Nigeria and Lagos, like I think there were two books on Nigeria that was written by a non-African mm -hmm. that was very generic. And I was like, ah, isn't Nigeria like the heartbeat of Africa, you know, all That's that. That's the thing, you know? Nigeria isn't... is Africa's big brother. I'm like, how come no one has written a travel guide for Lagos? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, like, how is that possible? I did my research and I thought, you know what, instead of me complaining about, ah, no one has done this, let me be the first one to create it. That's very creative, you know, and that's what we say. It's about time Africans tell their own story. There's no way someone from another whole continent will come here for two weeks and then write a whole book about mm -hmm. Africa. So I'm so proud of you. Like, you've done an amazing job. Guys, you don't even understand. Like, you don't, you don't, you know the verb. Like, this book. I'm telling you, you know, there's so many people who email me, some um, DM me on Instagram. They're like, Miss Trudy, want to travel? What do we do? Where do we start? So I'm telling you now, for free. If you want to come to Nigeria, this is what you need. You cannot Aww. come to Nigeria and not buy this book. 
Um, where can people get this book? Um, so this book is available at Amazon.com and also Amazon.co.uk. You can also buy it in Nigeria, either on our website or the specific stores that actually store it um, in Nigeria. So it's available anywhere. So this, if you're in Australia or you're in South Africa, anywhere you can buy this book. And the thing is, the book is very affordable. Anyone can purchase it. And you see guys, if you've traveled before, you thought, I think you will understand what I'm trying to tell you. Sometimes you go to a country, you don't know where to start. Mm. And that's how it usually is. Many times you want to travel, but it's like, okay, how do I go about it? Yani, this is your plug. It tells you where to eat, where to sleep, you know, where to go for fun, how to go about it. This is just incredible. You've done an amazing Thank job. Thank you so much. Oh my goodness. You don't understand what you've done. Oh, Did you okay. get it? <laughs> understand no. because so many of us need such she's even inspired me i'm thinking of writing such for kenya i don't know what you guys think leave a comment and let us know how has it been um it's been amazing that the feedback what is the response yeah you know what you guys should go on the amazon.com or the uk website and look at the reviews and maybe you can pull up on the screen mm -hmm. people are blown away someone actually called it the lagos bible oh wow the Lagos Bible. Bible. I'm telling That's you guys. So it's, it's been incredible. Like the feedback locally has been amazing. The quality, you say, oh, the quality is incredible. The fact that it's very personal, you know, the interviews in there, the recommendations in there. It's never, I've, I've never seen a travel guide like this before. And I think you were even going away looking through it, sick, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Um, so, yes, as in, like, I'm blown away by the feedback. So I just want to say a huge thank you to everyone that has bought it, is buying it. Um, I really hope I've helped sort of like change the narrative on how the world views mm -hmm. at least one of our cities in Africa, Lagos. I love how in this book you've talked to even the ordinary people, you know, you've interviewed some people who are up there, but mm -hmm. still you've talked to, you know, ordinary people. So it's a book that is very relatable. Exactly, exactly. I think it's important, you know, it's not always about the big names, big names, but it's always about the stories of the people on the ground, the local people. Yeah. Um, so I think I talked about I talked about um, a keke driver. I don't know if you guys know keke in that club. Just the two. Tuk tuk. We call tuk tuk. tuk. Yes. Yeah. So one of the um, drivers I interviewed him because he dressed corporately and just to tell his story about Lagos, his recommendations. Um, so telling a local story is important too, because that's also part of who we are, right? Yes. That's amazing. So now that I'm here, I am totally loving this place. I love how quiet it is. Um, it is spacious, and you can tell that um, you know it's a very very classy place. The paintings on the wall, the seats. Guys, have I mentioned how they are just you know taking precaution against Corona? As you can see, they are cleaning each and every table whenever someone leaves. You know, it just makes you feel comfortable. Now that you're inside here, we love how the place looks like. Let's see the food. Guys, so um, the food is here. Um, it looks really scrumptious. I am just, I can't wait. I can't remember the last time I was talking about food in my video and I said the food was finger licking good. And someone said, I can't talk about food being finger licking good without licking my fingers. <laughs> that was something. So, anyway, this is a Fanta mix. Oh, I've got a Sprite Kiwi. That looks Metroid really, really good. Cool. So that looks good. I hope it tastes good. It looks mm. good. Okay, we're gonna find out. First time trying Fanta Mix. I know for what Fanta is, but Fanta Mix? Mm -mm. Wow, you guys. Uh -uh. Mm. So good. So what they did is they mixed some blueberry syrup with my Fanta. Mm -hmm. And um, these are you like it? You like yours? Really good. It's mm -hmm. my first time actually, so it's good. Actually, first time trying it. Mm -hmm. Really good. So um, yeah, there's a couple of things you can mix your your soda with. There's there's strawberry, there's bubble gum, syrup, and uh, others. But mine is a uh, blueberry. I love it. Wow, I give it a 9 out of 10. Really good. Like, I'll give it a 9 out of 10 too. I'm actually blown away because typically when I come here, 
I always have like Coke Zero, like boring stuff. Like if you didn't pick this, I don't know if you got the courage to pick this, which is really, really good. Highly recommended. You had it, guys. Yeah. Makes it feel like I've been taking Coke wrong all my life. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 10 out of 10. 10 out of 10, you didn't even give it a 9 out of 10, ten. Every, temperature, 10. everything <laughs> Maybe you should just move to Lagos, yeah? <laughs> I'm You'll be like, what made you move to Lagos? Uh, so this one time I went to a restaurant, tried the cork and... Yeah, I don't know how I'll take cork without this <laughs> I love how they like actually because of COVID. They make sure they actually oh, make yeah. everything. Well, seven thousand wraps. Good. Mm -hmm. Your baby's so pretty, but she's cute. She's, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's gonna be a future heartbreaker, breaking hearts in the future. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, man, yes. it's mm. so good. Oh my god. <laughs> so what do you think about the hummus, the avocado mix? I love it. Yeah. It's so good. Guys, what do I tell you? This food is delicious. Okay? I am loving potatoes. You know, they're not very oily. They're just perfect, okay? The salad is just, oh my goodness, it is to die for. What are you saying? What? Everything here is just tasty. Um, so we were three of us, and the meal went for... So we were three, and at the cost of the food we ate today was 17,770 Naira. What do you guys think about the price? Is it fair? Um, would you come to this place? What do you love most about this place? Like, yeah, mm, there's an airline review you did. Was it Nigerian? And you were like, how it was so dirty? <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> yeah, we were not even kind. We were not even. Uh, you just told them. Uh -uh. You know, this is dirty. <laughs> I don't, I don't like doing things. Mm -hmm. I think on a plane, you know, this is the point where you have your body there for like hours and then. Mm -hmm. it, it should be clean, you know? Yeah. Um, yes, I think, you know, I think a lot of airlines do now are making an effort with COVID to clean even more, which I'm very happy about. Mm -hmm. So tell me, what's your favorite airline? Ethiopian Airlines, first of all, they're very friendly, they have really great service, yeah. and they're clean. <laughs> they're clean. They're clean, now that you said you don't like the, um, unclean. Yeah. Yeah. And also they're very affordable. That is very, very true too. Mm. Yes, because all the European airlines are so expensive. I don't know how, how it is for... The British Airways flies from Kenya to London. I'm sure they do, right? Um, like, some of the flights, direct flights, so for example, London with like British Airways, it could be like, sometimes $3,000 for economy. It depends on what. It's crazy expensive. Mm -hmm. You know, um, so it's good to have the likes of Ethiopian. Yeah. Matched up Addis Ababa, but actually, I want to ask you, what is the toughest part of being a Korea, being a creator? What is the toughest part? I think, um, you see when you're a content creator, you're doing it because also at the end of the day you want to, you know, you want to be excellent at what you do. Right. So when you feel like you've fallen short or you don't get the kind of response you expected, mm -hmm. that's hard. That's hard to say. Yeah. What about you? I think I spoke to you this earlier off like line that 
I probably need to bring in an editor mm, yeah. because I think you need to focus on what your craft is. And maybe that's telling the story, right? And you give someone else the that has the skills that enjoys it because if you you know outsource the things that you don't do, to, overall your things your content becomes better, right? So in a way, I have to like invest and find the right people to team up with. That I can push out better content more consistently. Yeah. When you're fit, you know, you're spending hours on end every single video, you don't even have the brain power to think creatively about your next video. Yeah, that's the thing. You know what I mean? So I think for me, that's the toughest part. And I think once I need to outsource that, like I have so many good ideas in my head. But you can't, it's, it's tough, you know? And also now that I have a baby, it's like, and I also so, actually co own a media company. Oh, so, are you a full-time content creator? Not really, but I dedicate a lot of my time to content creation too. So, aside, aside from my sassy content brand, I have other brands. I travel to Niger. I'm an author. I recently wrote a book. Right. Um, the Lagos Travel Guide. The Lagos Travel Guide is on there. Um, I also co-own a media company. Really? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I'm not sure if you ever. Would, it showed in Kenya we produced a TV show actually a few years ago called Looking for Love Niger. It's a dating show. We can handle it. Looking for Love. Looking for Love Niger. And it was shown all over Africa on DSTV. You know, so that's another like sort of like project company that I work on. Um, I just you know I have a few other personal projects. I think that for me was the excitement about moving back to Nigeria because I moved back in 2015. Is the ability for me to actually test out different projects that if I was in the West, I wouldn't be. So, you were not living in Nigeria before? Mm -hmm. 2015, no. I mean, Where were you living? Um, just before I came here, I was doing my MBA, my master's in France for one year. Then, before that, I was living in the UK. For how long? I was living in the UK for, gosh, let me see, maybe 12 years. Oh, wow. 12 years. Yeah. So before we wrap up, I want you to tell us, what would you tell people who want to travel to Nigeria? What would be advice that you'd give them? Since, you know, you're the one who's written the Lagos Bible, mm -hmm. I think you're the right person to give us this information. What would be the one thing people should know about Nigeria or Lagos before they come here? I think you should just keep an open mind. As in, I think when you even go to any country, it's really important not to compare it to where you're from so like, oh when america is like this no this is not america this is nigeria they have local customs local beliefs just local way of being and i think just having an open mind is very important to ensuring that you actually have a good experience yeah guys there you had it i hope you like what you've had man you gotta rush and get yourself this book link in the description box okay so um i love how you're using you know some what do we say sayings yeah some pigeon like proverbs book, some, some exactly proverbs. some pigeon proverbs um i love i love them so much can you tell us this one the way the way you would pronounce it the the this one ah okay this one it says if life they show you pepper my guy make pepper soup guys you had don't be there crying crying oh life is too hard life is too hard because there's a proverb in Nigeria here that says, if life they show you pepe, mm -hmm. my guy, make pepe soup. Guys, so as usual, you know that in every video, I teach you the Swahili word of the day. So today's Swahili word of the day is kitabu. Kitabu means book, okay? Kitabu means book, so don't forget. Don't forget to get your kitabu. <laughs> Link in the description box. And just like that, guys, we'll wrap it up. Bye.